Hey everybody, in today's video I'm going to show you how you can calculate the inflation rate in Excel and I'm going to show you how we can also pull that in using Power Query so that way you don't have to go in and do this over and over again. You can just have the data loaded into your spreadsheet and always have that inflation rate calculated for you. So to start, I'll show you how you actually can calculate the inflation rate manually. So on the Euro, US Bureau of Labor Statistics, there, there's a section for CPI. And if we just wanted to calculate the most re recent um, inflation rate, let's say for September 2022, we look at the current value, the current index value of 296.808 and divide that by the, the value in the prior year period. So, so if, for example, I were to take 296.808 divided by 274.31 minus 1, so we got 8.2% there, and that's the inflation rate for September. So rather than doing this um, manually or even copying this into Excel and then you know doing lookups, I'm going to load this into Power Query. So I'm going to copy this URL first and then back into Excel under the Data tab. I'm going to select from web. And now the screen is going to pop up asking me for a URL. And that's where I'm going to put in that link I just copied. So control V, put in here, click OK. And now Power Query is going to go and detect uh, the tables that it finds on that page. And so we've got CPI, a good document, but table one is the one we're looking for. Now, I'm not gonna load this directly into Excel just yet because I wanna transform it um, a little bit because my goal is to have it so that um, it automatically calculates the inflation rate as opposed to just pulling in the table because this would be um, not much different from downloading the Excel file. So I'm gonna click on transform data and now I'm gonna get started with, with modifying it. So it's gonna open up on my Power Query window here. And so as you can see right now, I've got the years in, in a column and the months uh, going across as, as headers. That's not what I want. It's not the easiest to manipulate. My goal is to have these months going down here as well. So to do that, I'm going to select this, this column this year, right click and select unpivot other columns. And when I do that, flips the data for me. So now I've got the year, the month, and the values. It's a lot cleaner and easier to um, make changes to it. Now what I'm gonna do is I've got the current year value here. I'm also gonna create another column for the previous year. To do that, you know, I can select this column again and under add column, select this button for standard, so standard calculations here, and I'm gonna select subtract. And so what's going to happen is whatever value I enter here is going to get subtracted from these values. So I'm going to hit just enter a value of one. And now I've got the, the previous year. So what I'll do now is rename this. So this is called previous year. And so now I've got the current year and the previous year. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is create a calculated column or a custom column where I'm gonna concatenate the year and the month. And so I'm gonna start with creating one for the current period. And so for this, I'm just gonna take the year, use the ampersand, link it with a dash, and then pull the attribute, which is really the, which is really the month. Hit OK, and that's my current period. But actually before, I made a mistake here, the one thing I do is convert these values into text first. So to do that, select this number and select text. It's gonna insert a step in between the next one. And then for the previous year, same thing, I'm gonna convert this into text. And now when I do this, now it's con uh, correctly concatenated because before it was giving me an error because I was combining numbers with with text and that's not going to 
not going to work. So what I'm going to do is repeat these steps now for the uh, for the previous period. So I'm going to create another custom column. And let's call this the previous period. And this time I'm going to take the previous year, ampersand, and then again the attribute. The month's going to be the same. And so now I've got the current period and I've got the previous period side by side. What I'm going to do next is create a duplicate of this table. Right click, duplicate. And this original table, I'm going to rename, call it current and rename this new one previous. So, so I'm going to have this one just have the, the current period values and the previous period as a, as a link and then, and then the value as well. So what I could do is select the columns that I don't want, right click, remove, and, and also can get rid of the previous year and pull the values like that. So I've got current period, previous period, and the value. Now on the previous table, what I'm gonna do is just have the uh, the current period and the and the value. So the current period and the value. So instead of selecting the columns that you wanna remove, you can also select the columns you wanna keep and then simply right click and remove other columns. And just like that, now we're just left with the ones that we actually want. So there's multiple ways that you can remove columns in Power Query, depending on how how many columns you, you want and whichever is easier. Because if you've got a lot of columns, you just want to keep two. It's a lot easier just to select the option to remove other columns. Next, what I'm going to do is go back to the current table and under the home tab, I'm going to select the option to merge my queries. Because now what I'm going to do is link up the current to the previous table and I'm going to use the previous period matching up to the current period because basically what I want to do is do a lookup here. Now I could use use some complicated M code uh, formula to to write this out but I'm trying to make this as, as simple as possible so that we don't have to worry about uh, coding anything uh, too complicated here. So I've got my lookup and I'm going to hit OK and now it's loaded this this new field here, and I'm going to click on this button to expand this out, and so I can select the fields that I want. So I only want the value. I'm going to uncheck this. I don't want a prefix. And now I've got my my value from the other table. So I'm going to I'm going to rename this to prior year value. And one way you can check to make sure that this is correct is you know just by spot checking. Uh, a value like for instance January 2014 is going to show up tw twice once as a current period and once as the previous period and both of those values should correspond to 10 so that's how we know that it's that it's correct now the next thing I'm going to do now is actually calculate the inflation rate so for that I'm going to add column select custom column call this the not the interest rate the inflation rate and for this, I'm going to take the value divided by the prior year value and subtract one to arrive at, per, at a percentage. And now I can convert this into a percentage. And now I've got my inflation rate in there. So I'm about done here. The main thing I have left to do now is just to really clean up this table and get rid of any empty values. For instance, like the values at the very beginning would not have prior period comparables. So to clean that up, I'm going to select this drop down arrow and remove empty. So this will get rid of any empty values because there weren't comparables. And what I'm also going to do, do is remove more columns that I don't need. So I'm going to select the inflation rate column along with the current period and now right click remove other columns. And so the benefit of using Power Query here is it saves all these steps along the way. So even though I've used those other columns in my calculations, I don't need to keep them at the at the end, right? So once I've got to my end point, or I've got the current period and the inflation rate, I can remove anything else I don't need because all these steps are saved. So every time this query runs, 
when I refresh the data, it's gonna download that data and go through all these steps over and over again. So it's like a macro essentially. So now I'm gonna hit the, the home tab and select close and load. And now it's gonna load these tables into my spreadsheet. Now it does download the previous one, but I can just delete this one because I don't need it. And then once I do, it'll show up as a connection only. If I flip over to the current one, so you need to reformat this to show the correct inflation rate. And now if I go to the very bottom, you know, I've got the, the first half of 2020, but I've also got September 2022, which is 8.2%. And so that is correct with the, the most recent rate that we've got. So that tells me that it's calculating correctly and downloading properly. So in the future, now that you've set this up in Power Query, all you would need to do is right click on this query and hit refresh. And now it's gonna download the data and go through all those steps. So if there's any new data, you don't have to worry about going in and downloading yourself and uh, reapplying any steps or putting in any, so any sort of template. Power Query essentially is doing that for you. So that's one of the cool things about using it for something like this is because you know you can download the data and at the same time manipulate it before it even gets into your spreadsheet so you don't really have to do any work so hope you found this video useful and thank you very much for watching